Well, the whole station is um, six and a half thousand acres. My parents are farming three and a half thousand acres up the uh, Makakoti stream, uh, round to the Tapawai, down to Blue Duck Lodge, and I'm farming three thousand. Uh, 200 acres on the other side of the Rotorua River, um, right up the Kaifokuka stream, which is one of the abandoned valleys of uh, um, the World War One settlement, and up in the Moranui stream, back up the road, another 1,600 acres up, up there. I'm farming three and a half to four thousand stock units over there, depending on uh, how bad the drought is at the time. Just buying any old ewes off the home farm, terminal side or everything, and fattening steers. I bought this farm here only partly as a farm, bought it mainly for its tourism potential and because of its history and it had the last remaining buildings of the Mangapurua Kaifokuka um, bridge to nowhere era, um, all the abandoned farms are off the back of it and it's um, got old roads and buildings and structures on it and, and it's got the whole story of that, that era really and I loved the stories and wanted to preserve it, um, do the buildings up and uh, and put some lodges in, some nice quality lodges for people to come and enjoy the area, the rivers and the history and um, and do some tramps and put some tramping tracks in and, and uh, so I've got the tourism. I also really enjoyed the biodiversity, really like the outdoors and the bush and all the, the bird life. Uh, when I started finding reasonable numbers of blue ducks here I wanted to do something to look after them and learn about them and so I've started a conservation project trapping all the predators that uh, that kill blue ducks and raid their nests, etc., the stoats and the and the wild cats and and, and main predators. And within the first year, the government approached me and asked me, uh, you know, if I'd like to apply for funding. Having the farm surrounded by abandoned farms of the Mangapurua era, uh, there was a lot of a lot of there's thousands of acres of manuka out there, so I saw the natural um, good land use there. Rather than break in any of my backcountry put tramping tracks through it and try and harvest manuka honey. You know, seeing that as a pretty good land use as well. Pretty yeah. unsustainable for sheep and beef the way I see it. Oh, okay. There's a range of soil types here. It's predominantly uh, papa country. A lot of that country that has hardly been fertilised for 25 years has got Olsen P levels of uh, 20, which are, seeing it hadn't had fertiliser in 20 years, I was very surprised. The uh, pH levels are very, very low. And so addressing that is um, one of the first priorities. So there's been getting uh, some lime in the back country to uh, bring the pH levels up. Well I'm running uh, between 1500 and 2000 uh, five year old ewes on uh, my property and just terminal siring, siring everything and uh, trying to finish as many lambs as I can off their mothers and then forward store everything else. A very very simple system. Running um, 350 steers. This is quite big country very extensive country and follows the valley so it's quite a long farm the, the, from one end of the station to the other it's about 18 kilometres um, by bike so nice. it's, uh, it's a pretty long ride it's, you know shifting the stock and things is not you know, it's not done every day you, you run them in pretty big paddocks and um, a big team of hunterways and, and shift them uh, once a week type of thing rather than, yeah. rather than daily. Tell me is your dad still involved? Yep there's the two separate farming operations really. My parents are still running Rotorua Station with my brother and his wife, and uh, I'm running the, the farms next door now. I don't believe farming just sheep and beef on on my property is sustainable uh, because the input costs are getting too high and it's too remote. So what I want to do is just is fit the the business around the best land uses and around uh, around the values that I I wanted to live by, which is um, is conservation and looking after the land and uh, leaving it a lot better place and so I've created a few different incomes from the land they all sort of got to work in unison and farming is one of them tourism biodiversity and looking after the biodiversity manuka honey a little bit of a uh, little bit of hunting turning the, the pests the pigs and the goats and the deer into um, into a product and uh, and there's carbon farming and one or two other things to spin off from it as well. And so do you enjoy it here? Never a dull moment really. We live on the river and uh, on the Wanganui River and I've created a tourism business by putting three lodges in and so we're always getting interesting people now coming down the river for different reasons and jet boating, canoeing, meeting a lot of really good people through the lodges, people coming in here that are fascinated with the history of the, 
the whole bridge to nowhere and the abandoned farms and and I'm putting wood fires in all the lodges now because there's quite a few bookings coming in for winter as well so sure. um, people are still keen to go on holiday in winter and go and see new places and go tramping and things so well you can't really just whip down to the dairy can you no it's it's an hour to town an hour to Tamaranui up that windy road that you just came down um, but we get used to we get pretty used to driving it and everyone's got good cars nowadays and it's um I've been up to Auckland a little bit in the last few weeks and an hour on this road is far more enjoyable than an hour in the Auckland uh, motorway traffic, I tell you, <laughs> no doubt about that.